So somebody that my viewers keep recommending that I review is no other than Muhammad Hijab himself. Now, I took a look through his videos trying to find something that looks like an argument, right? And there really wasn't much, but I did some digging and I found this section that had this, how to conquer atheism in eight minutes. It was under the atheist dawa section. And uh, yeah, Muhammad, you're not very good with dawa. You, you just looked really dumb. Anyways, let's get into this and see how this sounds, right? Because I think that everyone is going to be quite surprised with the stuff that's said in this video that this man is such a big influencer because this was utterly appalling to me and I'm very, 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 very disappointed in the state of Islamic apologetics if this is the best that you have to offer. <laughs> Now the Quran asks a very simple question. In chapter number 52, verse number 35 of the Quran, it says, Am khuluqu min ghayri shay'in am humul khaliqun? Were they created from nothing, or were they themselves the creators of themselves? Now if you speak to an educated atheist, they will not deny the fact that the universe had a beginning. Because this is pretty much scientifically proven. I don't know who you think you are saying that it's scientifically proven that the universe had a beginning. Now, saying something like this current instance of space-time had a point where it emerged from the rapid inflation, something like that would be accurate. But you seem to be representing the atheist position as some nonsense that it's not. I made a video for people like you that represent that atheists think that the Big Bang Theory means that something comes from nothing. You're an idiot, Muhammad. How dare you say such nonsense? You know better than this, especially with how educated you claim to be. Through the expanding universe, for example, we know that it had a beginning since it's still expanding. Uh, however, when you start speaking to them about what happened before the... You said that we know it had a beginning because it's still expanding. There was a start to the rapid inflation, if that's what you mean by that. Universe. This is when you get an unsure answer. They'll say, we don't know. And this is the first point of contention. If they don't know, then why do they call themselves atheists? Since that word means without God, and agnostic, which is a better word, means without knowledge, because it comes from the two Greek words, a, without, the meaning without, and gnostos, meaning knowledge, meaning without knowledge. Moving on now. So, atheists actually claim that no gods exist. Now, agnosticism is going to be more of a general withholding judgment. Not necessarily, I don't know, but it's going to be more of a withholding judgment. Now, with that being said, your vast misrepresentation of atheism disgusts me, especially when you already know the truth. In the last section, you mentioned how the universe had a beginning, but you're obviously just being deceitful because you know that's not the case. You already know the truth. You're at, you claim to be educated. You know the laws of thermo, at least you probably, at least this point in your apologetics career, have encountered the first law of thermodynamics. Muhammad, if the first law of thermodynamics holds true beyond the current representation of space-time, how, how, Muhammad, I ask you, could something such as energy be created or destroyed for that matter, because it can't be currently. There's no examples of that. To claim that energy had a beginning or to be was created would be special pleading, Muhammad, especially with your education behind you. You should know that. Stop an atheist in his tracks. 
All you really require is one deductive argument. And deduction has always been part of the scientific method and maths. And thus, it's really the strongest kind of logical argument. It's dealing with definitions and tautologies and things of that nature. So it's things that are going to be definitionally true. Like a sound argument is going to be something that's definitionally true. And you might have to arrive at the premises via induction, as I assume we're about to see here. Now, the argument goes like this. That everything, number one, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Muhammad. Muhammad, interesting here. So I, I think I think this is interesting here, Muhammad. Because you would have to arrive at this premise through induction, right? This would be a premise that would be citing observation, would it not? Now, to falsify this premise, all somebody would have to do is provide one thing without a cause and your argument is defeated, not even accounting for whatever comes next. So, Muhammad Hijab. Muhammad Hijab. So, Muhammad. Quantum fluctuations are uncaused. And they're totally random. And the great thing about deductive arguments is that I would only have to provide a logical possibility even when we get to the conclusion of something else that's possible to defeat your conclusion because we're talking about deduction. And if it's not definitionally true, it won't be a sound argument, right? It might be valid, but it won't be sound. So now that we know that premise one is false, uh, I guess we'll take a look at the rest of the argument. Let me say that one more time. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. Bro! Go read! You have no idea what you're talking about, Muhammad. And also, I almost forgot. When have you ever seen anything come into existence, Muhammad? Have you ever seen energy come into existence? So I think that wherever this is going is going to be some type of composition division fallacy or maybe a black swan fallacy because he's saying that everything that begins to exist has a cause so even if we got through what begins to exist means in this and to the has a cause portion we could just point out quantum fluctuations and we would know that this is a false premise right uh this is why we made the reverse column right so the reverse column that we run with atheist presuppositional apologetics first premise is that everything that is observed to exist arises from pre-existing stuff. We're not saying that we observe things beginning to exist. Because you don't. The energy would have always existed necessarily, Muhammad. You know this. You're an educated person. If I remember correctly, aren't you a doctor? You should know this stuff, especially if you're arguing about the fundamental nature of reality. Number two that the universe began to exist, as we've just mentioned. Three logically follows, which- So, Muhammad, based off of what we just discussed, that energy is almost certainly eternal, the universe would have necessarily always existed, given the laws of thermodynamics hold true prior to the instance of space-time that we're currently located in. Now, if you mean by the current representation of space-time of our universe, the current representation prior to whatever state change it had through the rapid inflation, then maybe we could talk and, and grant premise two. But as is, nobody in their right mind could grant premise two. Nobody. You would have to be rejecting the self-evident truth of our shared naturalistic, atheistic reality that's been revealed to all of sound mind through both natural and special revelation. Which is, the universe therefore has a course. Uh, Muhammad, since the premises are not true, this conclusion 
is only going to be following in the sense of validity, right? Because you have to address the truth value of the premises. So even if the deductive validity of the argument is there, if there is no truth value to the premises, the conclusion will have no truth value and it won't be a sound argument. So the validity is left irrelevant. But let's see what you have to say. Now, the question is, the question is, what kind of cause is this? Because if we say that that cause had a cause, and that cause had a cause, and that cause had a cause, and we go regressively infinitely backward, then we'd have an infinitely regressive line. So what, what's the vicious circularity here? Because that's what would be required to defeat an infinite regress claim, right? You would have to address an infinite regress on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, this is something that I see a lot of Muslim and Christian apologists do, where they try to just gaslight you into thinking that an infinite regress is inherently fallacious. That's not the case. Read any of the literature on this. An infinite regress is not inherently fallacious. And Muhammad, if you were as educated as you claim to be, you would know this. You, sir, would demonstrate some type of vicious circularity rather than just claiming that an infinite regress is inherently fallacious or can't be. Because if something like energy could neither be created nor destroyed, and it would have necessarily had to always exist, there could have been an infinite chain of causes. Whether that grounds out in infinite regress, brute fact, or necessary being is irrelevant. But in this case, you're citing an infinite regress and nobody cares because an infinite regress is not inherently fallacious. But once again, the truth value of your premise one and premise two is non-existent. So we don't even need to address this. Thus, it's completely appropriate and completely necessary for that, for that cause to be uncaused, to have no beginning. I'd like to see an argument for that. If you decide to respond to this, Muhammad, I'd like to see an argument for that. And to have the knowledge and creative capacity to change the situation. So, the only way an atheist can really destroy this argument is... Bro, you're trying to say that an uncaused cause has knowledge and creative capacity? You are insane. Muhammad, you have access to the same natural and special revelations the rest of us do. You already know the truth. You're just rejecting it in your unrighteousness because you want sin and evil to exist outside of a conceptual nature. You're trying to spread this vile nonsense, and I will not stand for it, Muhammad. I will stand here against the evil that you are spreading. It's by destroying one of the supremacies. One, which is that the universe, that everything that begins to exist has a cause. Already got it, Muhammad. I already took that one down. Let's see what you got to say next. They can try and prove that, but then have to show why and how things don't come into existence, popping into existence on a day-to-day -day basis. They won't be able to show you this scientifically or empirically. Ooh, hey, Muhammad, boy, are you confused. Go read about quantum physics, Muhammad. It'll help you get through this theistic brain rot. The other premise is that the universe began to exist. And as we said, science pretty much confirms this reality. Yeah, you said that, but I already pointed out how that is not the case. Unless you were intentionally obfuscating what you were talking about, not clarifying. Which I don't think that was the case. I think you're talking... When you say universe, that you're talking about everything that exists, which would be just not true. Now, this really, I'll leave it open for the atheist. Try and break down this logical argument. Try. Already done, bro. I got gotcha. you. I already helped you out there. Welcome to atheism, brother. And break it down. Another argument that you can bring forward to the atheist is what's referred to commonly as the fine-tuning argument. Now, before I begin, I want to define... This is a really fun one. ...define fine-tuning here as the, that the universe is so fine-tuned that it would allow life to exist. I'm not talking necessarily about aesthetics, how beautiful the universe is or whatever. 
I'm talking about this particular definition that it allows life, any kind of life, to exist anywhere in the universe. Yeah. Now, if you look at Paul Davis, for example, as a cosmologist, he said that now there's broad, basically, agreement. He said there's a broad agreement between the physicists and cosmologists that the universe is fine-tuned for human life. Um, and this is a broad agreement between theists and atheists, believers and disbelievers. If that's the case, Muhammad, then why can you teleport to 99.9999% repeating, of course, of the universe and instantly die? Huh, Muhammad? So you don't have to believe in God to, to recognize this reality. That's absolutely insane. Now, there are three, you know, three actual options, as you can choose one of them, to how this universe became so finely tuned. Option number one is that it evolved somehow. Well, what in the world? Muhammad! What? It evolved somehow? What? What, Muhammad? It, 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 what? It evolved somehow? This option is not available uh, in physics. And there's no actual evidence of that at all. And no serious physicist has ever made such a proposition. Thus, it's unscientific. Thus, you cannot say that. Option number two is that... Is that like the worst straw man of a position ever? I mean... That's why he put a garbage can there, right? Because he just made up a random thing, right? I, I think he just made that up. The universe is like this because it's a random generation. It's a chance factor. And this is what lots of atheists actually do say. I think more atheists would say that the universe is probabilistic. It wasn't necessarily chance. It's more probabilistic. And even if it was chance... What would be the problem with that? Do you have an argument that a chance universe or an accidental universe is a problem? I mean, you could present an argument for that if you wanted to and we could address it, right? But there is no issue with it being a product, product of chance, right? I mean, if the rapid inflation happened at a slower pace, which I don't even know if it's possible, it might be necessary. Everything might be necessary, right? In which case, this would have been the only way it could have ever been, right? But even if we grant other possible worlds, there would be possible worlds where the laws of physics and the laws of logic and all that could be different, right? If there was no space-time, there would have necessarily been no laws of physics or laws of logic or anything like that that we know right this just seems like he's trying to eliminate something and i i don't think he's going to provide an argument but let's see where he goes with this i bet he gets through it in under 30 seconds though but having said that if you look at roger penrose he's a physicist in oxford university he was talking about the entropy uh the entropy levels in the beginning of the universe uh and he says that the the possibility of the entropy level being the way it is in the beginning of the universe is, and he says, 10 to the power of 10 times 123. And that's a big number. That's just one calculation for one of the components of, of the universe in the beginning of the early stages of the universe. Now, having said that, you should know through just this evidence that saying it's a chance factor that the universe came into being is a ridiculous option that shouldn't even be uttered. Muhammad, you didn't even provide an argument for your position. Are you joking my ass right now? That wasn't even an argument for your, for, for your statement that you were making. There was no argument there. You said that Roger Penrose said that a straw man position of what some dumb people might think is possible prior to the instance of space-time that we currently exist within, when I'm talking about the Big Bang, which would have necessarily had no space-time because space-time is an emergent property of the rapid inflation, which would have made the laws of physics and everything else different, if not non-existent and just something else altogether. 
Bahamut, you are a straw manner of insane proportions, and you're not even giving the other side a fair shake. You, sir, you, sir, are a biased reasoner, and I am very, very, very disappointed that I've watched this much of your video so far. Now, let's see the rest of this, because I'm very interested to see how much more dumb this can get. The third option is that there was a designer. There was a creator. There was an inventor. This ma makes more sense, doesn't it? No! So the creator category that we have access to, Muhammad, is entirely temporal, right? So minds exist within space-time, right? They are part of a body. They're a part of a brain and a body that work in tandem. And they guide this person or animal to create things, right? This is the creator category that we have access to. They're creating stuff out of pre-existing stuff. Everything that we've ever seen that exists has been formed from pre-existing stuff. And the creator category follows no exception to this, right? Our creator category is people and animals that are made of stuff, creating stuff out of stuff. This is our creator category. So to say that there was a designer of all of this prior to space time, prior to the rapid inflation, is just special pleading. There is no reason for anybody in the world to accept your claim there with the data and evidence that we have available. And there is no reason for you to accept that claim, Muhammad Hijab. You have no idea what you're talking about on any of this, and you've demonstrated your own intellectual ignorance and dishonesty here today. Muhammad, you disgust me. You, sir, are rejecting the self-evident truth of our shared naturalistic atheistic reality, and I am flabbergasted at the lengths that you'll go to spread your unrighteousness. Okay, if you don't want to admit it now, it doesn't matter. If you don't want to admit it, it doesn't matter. I just want to say something to you guys. To the atheists. Seriously. This is what I want to say. That you don't even need to logically follow these arguments that I'm putting forward to you. These arguments... No, you don't, Mohammed. You can literally just look at the trees and know that no gods exist. Seriously, Mohammed, go look at a tree. And you will know, you will have the same knowledge that everybody else on this planet Earth of sound mind has, that no gods exist, Muhammad. You already know the truth. It's make sense. They're logically grounded, but you don't need to follow them. Because it's actually a natural predisposition to believe in God. And as the anthropological society of Oxford University... You're, you're just borrowing my argument now, Muhammad. So everybody knows no gods exist, as it's been revealed to all of sound mind through both natural and special revelation. Plus, there is a much more recent study than the child study that you're about to provide that basically falsified the innate belief hypothesis. It all but falsified the innate belief hypothesis, because the innate hy belief hypothesis appears to be nonsense. It was a meta-analysis of three different studies addressing this innate belief hypothesis that you're probably about to reference that includes uh, children, right? That was a, a test of the innate belief hypothesis that was not replicated in the future. I've concluded through some very, in, very, very, very important studies that have happened in 2011, for example, that belief in God is a predisposed belief within children. So to believe in God, you don't have to actually follow any logic. What's I didn't watch this ahead of time, Muhammad. I knew what you were about to cite. I talk to you apologists all the time. You guys have no idea what you guys are talking about. The study that I linked in the chat is a newer study, and I'm sure if we pulled up recent debates of you, you'd still be saying the same thing. When there is recent science that proves what you're saying to be false. So I will provide that science in the description below so that you can read that and not continue to lie to people about what you already know to be true.
there's no reason for you to be rejecting the self-evident truth of our shared naturalistic atheistic reality and your righteousness muhammad there's no reason let me help you. I'm ready to deconvert you. I can run the argument from shrooms on you, which is just, is it more likely Muhammad was high as shit on shrooms or spoke to an angel? Or I can run the atheist precept argument on you. Uh, th there's all sorts of ways we could go with this, Muhammad. But you need help here. And I am the guy to help you, Muhammad. So if you don't have to be a smart person, it should be a natural thing. So I say this. I say it's time now. It's time to stop fooling ourselves. It's time. What did you say? No, I'll say it one more time. I said it's time. It's time to release yourself from the suppressive shackles of atheism that are stopping you from realizing your true potential. Once you've completely taken those shackles away from yourself and liberated yourself from atheism, and released your predisposed self. That's the true self, your true self. Once you've done that, then and only then will you realize both peace and purpose in life. Muhammad, I can see the atheism in your eyes. You're lying to these people. You already know the truth. You are of sound mind. I can see it in your eyes. I can see you've seen a tree. You know the truth, Muhammad. Then, and only then, will you reach the basic human function. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Also, listen guys, if you like the video, um, try and share it. Try and share it to your friends and colleagues, whatever. Uh, and subscribe to the, ch to the channel, inshallah. And I got you, bro. I'm sharing it with a bunch of people right now. Now... Muhammad, this was an utterly disgusting display of intellectual dishonesty. And I don't know what to think about it other than that this was absolutely disgusting. I've seen some of your recent debates are absolutely horrible. You, sir, are an unrighteous individual and you've promoted very vile and evil things. Now, Muhammad, Muhammad, I know you know the truth. I can see it in your eyes. Feel free to send me a DM on Discord. It's Breakfast Tacos on Discord. I'd be happy to elucidate the truth to you of what you already know, but have been simply rejecting in your unrighteousness. Muhammad, I'm here to help you if you need me to save you from yourself. You got wrecked, nerd. Got fucking dominated, dude. Absolutely dominated.